Well, hello and welcome everybody. My name is Steve Teresi. I'm the Director of Training and Technical Services here at JL Audio. I'm located down in Southern Florida, just a couple of miles north of our main headquarters in Miramar, Florida. And today joining me, I have Mr. Kevin Ferry from the, Pennsylvania, uh, the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. Say hello, Kevin. Hello, everybody. And over in Southern California, the man, the myth, the legend, it's Mr. Rob Haynes. Say hello, Rob. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Get under the banner there, you know. <laughs> That's something I would do, Rob. Bad, bad. <laughs> Fine. I learned from the best. What can I say? <laughs> so as uh, Rob's forehead is telling us, today's uh, session is going to be about <laughs> subwoofer systems. Um, and this is this is something that's a, a big part of who JL Audio is as a company. Kevin and I were just talking about that, that you know, JL Audio has made enclosures from the very, very beginning. Uh, you've heard us say this a million times, that we're an application-based company, and we put our, our efforts where that statement comes from, and we've been building enclosures of some sort since the very, very early days of the company. So uh, you didn't actually come to hear me talk. You came to hear Rob talk. Uh, so you know that Kevin and I are going to be keeping an eye in the chat area out there on Facebook, and we'll do our very best to answer as many questions as we can. Um, ones that we think would be really cool for Rob to speak about, we'll, we'll prime him for those. He will not be able to see those questions, so be nice. He'll see them later. Um, but without further ado, Rob, why don't you share your screen, and let's get rolling. All right. Sounds good. Are we looking okay? Session agenda is up. We're good. All right. They're not kidding. I literally can't see anything other than my presentation right now. So um, thanks again, everyone, for joining us for our weekly uh, online training series. And as Steve mentioned, today we're going to talk about our enclosed subwoofer systems. Um, we're going to talk a bit about the design and production aspects of all of our uh, JL Audio enclosures, um, you know, prefab subwoofer systems. Um, I hear them call sometimes. Um, and after we discuss the how and whys and all of that, we'll get into the entire lineup, um, some application uh, uses for each of the different series of enclosures, and then, of course, end up with uh, our Q&A, which uh, always ends up going off the rails, but I think that's a good thing because uh, you guys ask a lot of good questions, and uh, you know it's our job as the training team to, to help as many people out there as possible, even if it doesn't necessarily pertain to the, the topic that we're discussing discussing uh, that day. So um, you know, send those questions in, and uh, we'll do our best to answer those. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. And um, I really want to talk first about our engineering and the production that goes into our uh, JL Audio and closed subwoofer systems. And um, as we've talked about in many, many trainings, uh, you know, it all starts with this man right here and his very talented team of uh, speaker engineers. Um, if this is one of your first trainings with us, if you don't recognize this gentleman, uh, that's Lucio Proni. He's our founder, the L in JL Audio. He's still our chief, um, you know, chief uh, engineer and oversees our entire loudspeaker uh, engineering team. And uh, just like all of our JL Audio speakers, subwoofers, all of the enclosures are designed by his team in South Florida as well. So the same team designing the speakers are designing all of our enclosures. And I think that's pretty important. That means you are going to truly get the best possible enclosure for that specific subwoofer and the application that the enclosures uh, you know, designed for. And you really can't say that unless you have that type of on-site engineering uh, that we're blessed to have in our South Florida facility with Lucio and his very talented team of uh, loudspeaker engineers. But we don't just design, uh, you know, all of our products in South Florida. We build a lot of our enclosures in Florida as well. Um, as a matter of fact, every single JL Audio uh, uh, prefab enclosure system is built in our South Florida facility outside of the base wedge, the W0V3 ported enclosures. Those we don't make in the U.S. here, but everything else in the family starts at our South Florida facility in our awesome wood shop. And I know Kevin is a big woodworker and he's got a CNC in his uh, workshop and I'm sure he's he drools every time he sees these pictures because we've got three CN computer controlled CNC machines that cut upwards of 700 full sheets of MDF wood a week. And uh, it's pretty cool when you watch that. Um, if you look closely in this picture, you'll see those big uh, yellow hoses that kind of come down from the, uh, kind of looks like a crane over the uh, CNC machine. And that's a big vacuum system. These machines actually vacuum seal to a, a sheet of wood and pick it up and 
perfectly place that big full sheet of MDF on the CNC so it can go through and start cutting the wood for the various enclosures that we may be uh, working on that day. And here's a cool shot actually of one of the Como machines. Um, this looks like it's probably for a CP108 or CP106 uh, micro sub enclosure. Um, but you can see how it cuts out all of the, not just the actual side pieces, but then also makes all of the markings for where the port wall is going to go, alignment dots. Um, if you look in the bottom right corner, uh, you'll see there's kind of two, uh, two sets of dots across from one another. Those are alignment dots. I'll talk about why those are important in just a bit when we get into the actual assembly of these enclosures. Um, but really cool to see this stuff. I mean, I just love watching these things work all day, computer controlled CNC, just moving all over the wood, perfectly cutting everything uh, for our team to uh, at some point assemble. Now, one thing that's unique about the way we build our wooden enclosures is we do take a bit of a different approach. Um, you know, usually when you would see an enclosure be made, what happens? You cut your wood, you glue and nail the wood all together, and then you wrap it in carpet, right? We do it backwards at JL Audio. After all of that wood is cut, we actually then apply all of the flat pieces of the enclosure directly to a large sheet of carpet. And uh, it's kind of a different approach, and it made no sense to me at first. I'm like, why the heck would you do that? But real estate is, uh, it costs money. And an enclosure takes up a lot of space. So in a way to improve efficiency and also just storage in general, what we do with this wood is after we cut it, we apply it to the carpet, and then the stacks of carpeted wood go on a pallet, and they actually go up above, as you can uh, see in this picture right here. We store the wood up there. Then when it's time to build that specific enclosure, they take down that pre-carpeted wood and then we can go forward with the assembly process. And uh, it's actually a really cool process. Um, you may have noticed on the CNC machine that the top sheet of or the top piece of that uh, MDF wood is painted black. And uh, that is actually something we do on purpose. It's not necessarily to help with acoustics or, you know, any sort of black magic stuff you may hear about when it comes to making enclosures sound better, but it's to help our assembly team. One thing that's very unique with how we assemble our enclosures is we use what's called a wrap method, where it literally just folds together like a box. And if you look closely here in this image, you'll notice there's these chamfers 45 degree angles cut into the sides of the enclosure pieces. And that allows us to then, after we put the port wall or any internal bracing in place, that's what allows us to literally fold the box into a single enclosure, as you see here. And then we use a nail gun to hold it in place while the adhesive dries and seals the enclosure. But that's those two dots I pointed out earlier those are alignment dots. That helps make sure prior to us folding the enclosure up that everything's properly aligned, nothing's out of whack that could cause any potential air leaks, and we have a perfect seal all the way around. So a lot of thought and work goes into building a JL Audio enclosure. Um, of course, we quality control all of our US built drivers that go into the enclosures in our facility. So every prefab enclosure from JL Audio, from TW1, all the way up to the W7 enclosures, all those drivers are built in our facility. They're 100% quality control tested. And on final assembly of the enclosure, that's tested as well. So we test the speakers off the assembly line, and then we test the final enclosure, again, to make sure there's no air leaks, no unwanted noises, everything's, uh, you know, polarities properly connected. We have the positive to the positives, all of that stuff. And then it can go out and get uh, packaged up and shipped out to our dealers or directly, you know, to our consumers. So a lot of work goes into building a JL Audio enclosure. And, um, you know, for me, I think they're a good, they're, as a, from a retail perspective, they're a great tool to have because it improves efficiency in the install bay. But, you know, I feel at times, like even on a consumer side, like when you say prefab, it gets a bad rap, like it's an inferior product if it's not in this custom enclosure. And that's not always the case. It could be if you're buying, you know, an inexpensive universal type enclosure with half inch, you know, cheap wood or something. But we use properly, you know, 
proper high quality MDF, the correct thickness for the application of the driver. You know, we don't use a half inch sheet of MDF for a, uh, you know, 13W7. That thing's gonna be built to the nines to handle the kind of back wave pressure a larger speaker like that can have. So prefab when done the right way, for me is a, actually a really smart, smart choice. Again, from a retail perspective, if you're one of our dealers, if you have a solid prefab enclosure that's perfectly designed for that specific driver, it frees up your time in the install bay. Now you can help your next customer out instead of wasting a couple hours and dirtying up your shop with all that sawdust. You have an application from the source that's specific for the driver that's in it. And that means you're gonna get the best all around of performance. In my opinion, it helps with reliability as well because we're not worried about the enclosures being too large or too small that can affect the excursion, excursion movements of the driver. And, you know, really there's just about anything for your application. We've got large ported enclosures. We have small ported enclosures. We've got wedge boxes. We pretty much have an enclosure for just about any mobile type of application you may need. Additionally, all of the speakers that come in our prefab systems come with a two-year warranty instead of the standard one-year warranty if it's sold by itself. So it makes a lot of sense when you think about all of this to look into using one of our enclosed subwoofer systems because there is no compromise in the enclosure like you may find with more universal type products. And it's designed by the same people designing the speaker, which means it's gonna be the perfect match for that specific driver and the specific application for what type of enclosure uh, it is. So let me, that, let me chime in real yeah. quick, Rob. And, and <clears throat> what's really cool is you're getting an enclosure that is completely designed and engineered specifically for that specific driver. And just because it is a prefab enclosure doesn't mean that you can't build a cool trim panel or build something very nice to integrate it into a vehicle. Yes, if there's a cost associated with it, you can put it into a trunk or, or wherever underneath the rear seat, what have you, and, and make it look nice and sound great. But if you do have the opportunity and you can go ahead and build a nice trim panel, and I'm sure we'll see a few uh, slides or a few uh, images down here that show that kind of integration too. But for me, it was a great thing. I don't have to build an entire closure and figure out port length and all of this other stuff. I could put the enclosure in, build a nice trim panel. It's cost effective to the customer, still gives uh, a great custom uh, feel and a custom look, but it everything is really integrated and, and working properly and I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, you know, before I started working for JL Audio, my dad had a um, Dodge Challenger and he had a dual TW1 power wedge enclosure. And I was like, oh, you're not, you always build your own enclosures. Why are you putting this in? He's like, look how small this enclosure is. And all I have to do is cut a single sheet of wood, router out a nice looking oval in the middle of it. And it looks like I did all the work myself. And I was like, huh. That's rather smart. So yeah, um, we do have a couple um, examples of that later on, but yeah, just putting a, a nice solid prefab behind a beauty panel uh, can make it look fully custom and you still get that rock solid uh, enclosure as well. So let's get into the enclosures and start with the HO wedge category, a very, very popular line. Um, yeah, these things get down, they're loud. Um, first, we've got the W7AE model. Um, you know, available in the 12 and 13 inch. Um, I personally, you know, I know a lot of people were sad to see the red carpet go. I love the black carpet on these. I just think it looks extra sleek and stealthy and high end and just a very solid, beautiful enclosure. But what's unique about the HO Wedge enclosure series is the patented uh, design. We use what we call a chamber coupled port design. And by doing that, in, it, it helps decrease the overall size of the enclosure because you're not dealing with the extra port length on the side and we're actually using the bottom the back and the top of the enclosure for the port wall so that does help shrink it down a bit but it also the way the port exits you get this like double, I don't want to say doubling a base but you get the best of both worlds where your port and the driver are meeting at the same location pushing out more output but again, this is a JL Audio enclosure. Yes, it's ported. Yes, it's got tons of output, but it still sounds really good. 
you know, you can use these for, you know, at more SQ type systems. It doesn't just have to be for SPL loud bass. These are very well refined, well rounded enclosures. And a lot of it's because of that patented port design that first came out on, if I'm correct, if I'm wrong, Steve, the W7 HO was the first HO enclosure we did. I believe that that it was, yeah. Um, I know Lucho and the team worked really hard to do that chamber couple thing, um, and that, that was obviously to enhance the performance overall, like you were just saying. So I'm pretty sure it was. I, I know the red carpet that's still in the image here, or yeah. you know, <laughs> uh, it's it's pretty pretty funny. Anyway, uh, I, I think I like the red better. I like the contrast, but you yeah. Know. <laughs> but yeah, I think it was the first yeah, part. I guess. <laughs> But what I love, even in this computer rendering here, you can see the massive bracing on the inside of the enclosure. Um, you know, this is heavy duty wood we're using here. Um, I, I I don't remember off the top of my head. I'd imagine at the bare minimum, it's three quarter inch MDF. And then you've got heavy bracing. The port wall also helps solidify things the way it, um, you know, goes into the side grooves on the side pieces of the enclosure. So just a really well thought out enclosure for both output, but without reducing sound quality as well. A newer addition to the HO Edge family is the W6V3 versions. And it's uh, a bit of a different looking design. These are kind of more compact. Um, they're easier to tuck away into the corner of a vehicle. And while it looks like it's completely different, it does still use that same chamber coupled port design as you can see in this cutaway image right here. And again, this is just a very well-rounded enclosure. Um, I used this in my uh, older car uh, for a while, um, running it off of an XD1000 slash one. And it was just, I mean, this thing got down, it was clean, it blended in nicely with my mid base. I was able to tuck it kind of in the corner and still have tons of room uh, in the rest of my trunk. And if you put it in your trunk the right way, uh, you know, you can hopefully prevent loose stuff from the trunk hitting the uh, subwoofer there, which I always get nervous about with, with subs in the trunk and us throwing stuff back there. So um, if you're really worried about protecting your subs, hey, the HOW3V3 version. Does this is my favorite, control. by yeah. the way. It's, I think it's an underutilized enclosure, but I love the look of it. I love the fit of it, and I love the sound of it. And obviously, the price is a lot more aggressive than the other enclosures you've shown so far. But you know, if you haven't heard this one in the right installation, I strongly recommend this one. Sorry, Rob. I just had to get that in. No, you actually <laughs> stole everything I was about to say. Um, but as I say, this is one of my favorites as well because you know when you think about the amount of output that this puts out, despite being on the lower side of the power ratings, you know, this thing is awesome. And we're only talking about maybe 250 to three, 400 watts of power, depending on what, what uh, you know, model or what size subwoofer we have in there. So for very minimal power, which is always nice on the charging systems, we've been, you know, talking about that for a long time, you can get a lot of output, great sounding bass. And for me, there's always just something special about the W3 V3 series. There's always just that loud, impactful bass. Uh, they don't need a ton of power, rather small enclosure requirements. And yeah, this is, you know, it's not a small enclosure, but for a ported 12 inch enclosure, that thing's pretty tiny. And you get the beautiful bar grill to protect it. And if you didn't know, all of the bar grills you see on the various, uh, the W7, the W3 V3 HO in this example here, we actually built, we even do those in-house. Our team literally takes raw metal rods, we polish them, we bend the 90 degree angles in, they self tap them for any ones that need to be secured. I mean, we could probably buy that stuff somewhere, but nope, that's not how we do things at JL Audio. So we have a-, a You couldn't buy it and have it anywhere close to the quality of what we're doing no, on our practices. Not at all. And yeah, there's a couple guys that every day they're there just bending rods and hand polishing the steel and making them look as pretty as they do. So a um, couple cool applicational pictures showing these. Again, this is uh, from uh, Michael at Audio Electronics in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, just, you know, for me, that's perfect. You have a beautiful enclosure that fits right between the shock towers. He's got his HD amplifiers mounted above it on the rear deck. And this is a system that's going to sound good. It's going to get loud. It's going to have good quality. And, you know, I, you know, I'm, I love custom fabrication. I think there's definitely at times a need for that. But if you don't have to, you know, this frees up some money maybe to, uh, you know, invest in better amplifiers or more sound damping material, other aspects that will improve the overall performance 
of your audio system. Uh, Conrad, uh, one of our good friends from uh, up north in Canada at Sudbury Car Audio. Again, just a nice basic system here. He had a, a W6HO enclosure with an XD600-1. It's in the trunk, doesn't take up a lot of space. They have it side firing off the, uh, the uh, quarter panel area there, which probably loaded nicely in that car. So again, you got you have the flexibility. You have a couple of different options. Um, as we kind of talked about uh, earlier with the W3 price point, we have different price points for these HO enclosures as well. And if you haven't heard or looked at that W3 V3 one, I highly recommend it. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at the overall performance. But you know, don't get me wrong; those W6 and W7 versions as well are phenomenal sounding enclosures. And again, it's all from that patented port design that uh, our team came up with, uh, you know, guys got to be close to two decades ago now. So, um, and we're still using it, which shows it's the right way to do it for this type of ported application. Moving on to the sealed side and our Pro Edge family, again, um, probably the most rock solid sealed prefab enclosures you're ever going to find are in the Pro Edge lineup. Um, again, we've got the W7 options. Um, I just love the way these enclosures look. You've got that beautiful, thick, gloss black baffle that allows the W7AE to be recessed a bit into the actual enclosure itself. Again, you got the handmade grill bars uh, and then just a nice, beautiful, clean black carpet wrap job. And again, just like all of our other enclosures, these all fold up together. You know, we still cut those 45 degree angles into the sides and this uses that same wrap method to build. Um, a little, uh, little more time consuming on the larger ones than say a micro sub, but it's really cool to watch these get built in our facility in South Florida. And again, once, uh, you know, with everything going on in the world right now, once it's allowed, uh, you know, we'd love, you know, giving tours of our facility and you can come and watch these, uh, you know, get made if you're lucky. So, um, but this is a really nice setup. Again, you know, the W7 AEs, um, originally the W7s, Lots of great output, but again, it's, you know, for the W7, it's all about producing quality bass at whatever frequency you're looking at and at the same output level. So, you know, for those more SQ type systems, um, even for SPL, these will work, but I love these if you're doing like an, a hi-fi type system because you've got an enclosure specifically designed for the W7 to really make it shine and really give that just clean all around kind of blissful base performance. And it just looks phenomenal while doing so. And those grills, we all know how much a W7 has the potential to move. Those grills are key to make sure uh, it doesn't move to the point where it's hitting stuff in your trunk and potentially causing damage. A One of the nice things about uh, those enclosures and, and the, the, uh, the W3 uh, enclosure too is, the the angled backs on these seem to fit just about anything yeah. you set them up against. For <laughs> it's like we put some thought into that and, and and measured that angle. I actually have done numerous of these um, um, prior to even coming on with JL Audio, and and these were some of my first real experiences with the current day uh, lineup and stuff like that. Not the the nineteen nineties. I mean the Oh man, I just dated myself there. But uh, <laughs> I that. you always try to hide your age. <laughs> but man, do these things just sound good and they just fit properly. And, uh, you know, just a couple tabs. Um, the nice thing about these two is they have that little ledge on them. So mm -hmm. you can put some just nice little angled tabs and you don't even have to put any holes in the box, like a, just a little L brackets to, to pull it down. You don't have to put any holes in the enclosure or anything like that, man. Just the, the simple little things that just add up to mountains with these enclosures. Yes, they have the best of the best subwoofers in them, but just the little details too that go with them is just, just amazing on there. Um, it's just great. So um, yeah, I mean, just make sure that you guys are knowing and, and using those and, and they fit great to the back of suburban seats or the back of uh, any car seats too, mm -hmm. that are angled in there too, just to give you that nice uh, supported wedge too. Hmm. Thank you, Kevin. Um, 
did we mention the the one inch thickness on the on the w sevens there too i didn't mention the thickness but I, that is a big baffle on the front <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's not too many prefab enclosures with one inch thick baffles right yeah. <laughs> on, on this particular one, the Pro Edge, the whole outer thing, you can see it in this image pretty clearly. If that's a one inch thick, everything. Yeah, yeah. The top this is, is solid. Yeah. And when you go to lift it, you'll know. <laughs> uh, have a buddy or a back brace. <laughs> Speaking of heavy, uh, the other Pro Edge enclosures have some weight to them as well. Um, these really cool looking models use our W6 V3 and really do a great job of taking advantage of the W6 V3 smaller airspace requirements. Uh, these are available in uh, uh, single or dual subwoofer models. And again, just a very sleek looking, um, easy to tuck away in a corner, um, single or dual system. Um, what I like about these Pro Wedge models on top of just, you can feel how solid they are, is that really cool looking industrial kind of, you know, rough and ready uh, grill and baffle that's attached to the front of the enclosure. Really does a nice job of protecting the speaker from anything that may be in your trunk. I know even with the bars, there's still the chance I've seen stuff go through the bars and hit the driver. So these are great. Everything's protected. I've seen a lot of these used in like Jeeps where you have a, um, you know, very small area behind the seat and the, uh, the rear tailgate hatch there. So these fit nicely in there. That rugged look kind of goes with that Jeep kind of style and aesthetic. And uh, what's really cool on the dual models is it is an individual chamber for each driver. That we don't have we don't have to worry about any back wave cancellation or anything like that. So individual chambers for each of these. And what I really like about these Pro Wedge dual models is in smaller hatchback crossover type vehicles. Um, you know, a, a Civic hatchback like what Eric Cole has, smaller SUVs. Uh, if you use these dual models and the way they fire off the sides of the vehicle in those uh, open vehicle environments, these things sound awesome. The amount of base, how clean and tight it is with that W6 V3 subwoofer, these just yield really nice performance gains in those open types of vehicles where you can side load the drivers. Now, these are pretty small, being they are W6 V3, but if they're still too large for you, we still got you covered because we also have the Pro Wedge models available with TW3 as well, our nice thin line subwoofer that uses our concentric tube suspension. So these are even shallower and smaller than the W6 V3 models. Still have a lot of good output, as you guys have heard, with the TW3 subwoofers. And I love just comparing uh, the W6 V3 to the TW3. It's still dual chambered, as you can see, but significantly smaller in terms of the overall width of the enclosure. And uh, here's a really cool picture Phil Cantu from Elevated Audio up in Denver sent us. I mean, to me, this is a perfect application. This looks like a, a smaller SUV or something, probably a family car where you got to put a bunch of stuff back there. It doesn't take up a lot of space. It's gonna be protected from anything that's thrown in the back of that vehicle. And that's really what the Pro Wedge series of enclosures is all about. Providing you a solid sealed enclosure that's, you know, for what they are, not gonna take up a ton of space, yet really give you good access uh, or good overall performance. And again, what I love is all of these have some sort of protection to make sure the speakers are not gonna hopefully get hit in the trunk by anything that's loose or uh, thrown around. And, you know, I mean, I get it. I keep my trunk dirty at times, but I, I cry when I see pictures online of uh, like nice subwoofers and enclosures like this. And the subs are just, you know, beat to heck from hitting stuff loose in the trunk. And it's like, oh, you spent all of this money on that. Why would you do that to the poor subwoofer? So anything that has protection, I'm always a big fan of. But without a doubt, these are probably the most solid sealed enclosures you'll find on the market for any subwoofers out there. Another nice lineup is the Power Wedge. And again, this is a very diverse lineup, really good for those smaller uh, applications where we don't have a lot of room. And hey, Rob, are, real, real quick, yeah. real quick, we had a really good question. Sorry, my mic was mood, muted there, so I had a, a lag no pop in there. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> um, Joey actually 
tagged in. I know I mentioned making or having some L brackets and stuff like that to hold uh, these enclosures down. Mm -hmm. He thought he, he asked if we had any thoughts on including some strapping options so that they could be easily secured um, from flying around as well as not drilling into uh, something by accident, like a gas tank, I'm guessing underneath a car or something like that. Um, that would be a problem. Yes. Right. <laughs> that is always a problem. Yeah. Um, for me, um, it's tough because every single vehicle is going to be different. Um, so it's so tough to have some sort of universal type adapter that's going to work for every application. I mean, you might have a Jeep, like Rob was saying, with um, one of those dual enclosures, and you might have some hooks right there that you could just put a little ratchet strap on it, and it might look cool in, in your type of uh, rugged off-road application there, right? And it kind of fits your theme and all of that. But that same ratchet strap application isn't going to fit in a Mercedes-Benz uh, vehicle, right? So there's there's a lot of different ways that you can do that out there. If you're having some problems and having some thoughts on, on, on trying to get it nailed down, always look underneath the vehicle, see what's going on and, uh, and understand uh, what you're going to be drilling into. Um, and just don't use some really long sheet metal screws. There's a lot of cool like uh, rivet guns that you can put a rivet nut in there and, and then have it bolted in if you need to. So that way it's not really a, a sharp, metal object protruding down from the uh the bottom of the floor or anything like that too so there's there's a lot of different options and it also depends on what your capabilities are too um you might if you're if you're not feeling super comfortable with it definitely talk to your local retailer and see what they can come up with with uh, mounting options for you there too that was a very good question all right, so moving on uh if you do not have a lot of space you may want to look into the power wedge lineup um, again, use all of our TW products, um, including the TW5 V2, so our cool 13 and a half inch shallow uh, subwoofer setup. So um, without a doubt, this is going to be probably the loudest of our wedge enclosures just because of the uh, increase in surface area of the TW5's cone, the increased excursion abilities. You have the grill included, which is great, so you can put it right up against the seat or a panel and not have to worry about the woofer uh, making contact, but just very nice for, you know, single cab trucks, uh, other areas where you may have an angled surface, you need to put the subwoofer up against. Um, we do also have a couple smaller options in the wedge style using our TW3 thin line woofer series. Again, these are available in 12 inch or 10 inch, um, you know, great for, you know, a system amplifier or a five, you know, a small, you know, three to 600 watt monoblock amp, depending how many you're running, but just a very nice wedge enclosure that has a good amount of output and sounds really good. Now, if you don't want the wedge option, maybe you need a more traditional flat type enclosure. We have those as well in the power wedge lineup with 10 and 12 inch TW3s. Again, these are really great for those small applications behind seats, maybe under uh, in a storage compartment you have in your trunk floor. Um, there's a lot of cool uses for these uh, power wedge enclosures. We even have them in the TW1 series as well, which is really tiny. Because you got to remember, TW1s, a 10 only needs 0.35 cubic feet, and a 12 only needs 0.65 cubic feet per woofer. So that dual 12 inch enclosure right there is probably around 1.3 ish, uh, yeah, about 1.3 cubic feet, which is really small for two 12s. And that's actually what my dad had in his old Challenger. And it took up like no space in the trunk at all. So these are very, very compact enclosures because- Hey Rob, yes. if I remember right, that dual 10 box is roughly, if you took the cardboard that we shipped the box in and like put wood around it, you got the box. Pretty much, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, ridiculously small. And um, again, some cool pictures that were sent in, again, uh, from uh, Michael at Audio Electronics. Here he's got the TW3 power wedge just, you know, down in the storage compartment uh, under the floor panel there with a nice VXI, um, looks like a five-channel system amplifier running everything. I mean, again, application-specific enclosures. This is a great, you know, showing of what you can do and why we create these smaller, uh, you know, thin enclosures. It's not just about putting it under a seat or behind a seat, but it maybe it's in the floor. Uh, Eric Cole from our tech support team sent in a couple examples. 
Again, here's a uh, 12 TW3 power wedge. Sits perfectly between the shock towers of a, don't be surprised if you all know Eric Cole, a Honda Accord. I think this might be his brother's Honda? car. Honda? Eric Cole has a Honda? Oh, shocking. Mm -hmm. But fits perfectly up in the towers, uh, run off of an XD600-1. And really, there is no loss of trunk space. I mean, we're talking only a couple inches of depth. And who's probably using all of that air real estate where that enclosure is? Probably that doesn't get used all that much. So you get a big, solid 12-inch TW3 with hardly any loss of your trunk space at all. And again, here's an example of the TW1 model that Eric sent in as well and his um, Civic before he did his big system in it. But again, you know, for a dual 12 inch enclosure, that is ridiculously tiny. I know? enjoy I enjoy this enclosure a lot because yeah. it really shows off the the design of the TW1 subwoofer and how they're made to be used in a very narrow application with multiple woofers. I mean, yeah. it really just pulls that strength of that application design together. And that box is super narrow and fits between a lot of stuff. Yeah, that uh, also helps actually, with the, the technologies on the TW1. Like going back to this image real quick, you know, you can see with that tabier design and those flat edges of the TW1 product, we're able to really squeeze those woofers right next to one another and really decrease the overall real estate of what's needed for the uh, enclosure itself. So again, you know, multiple options. You got the wedge, you've got the, the standard, you know, you know, more rectangular enclosure. And again, hits all the different price points you may need to be at. You've got TW1, TW3, TW5. So the best of the best when it comes to thin woofers and very compact applications. But we went to the next level with Power Wedge and we created the Power Wedge Plus family uh, a few years back. And these are um, a, a normal power wedge enclosure with a special TW1 driver and a built-in amplifier. And uh, these are super cool. Um, this is not just like an off-the-shelf cheap amp that's thrown into a, uh, an enclosure. Um, this amplifier is a very special amplifier designed by Bruce McMillan, BMAC as we like to call him. Um, you know, Bruce, he's our senior amplifier engineer. He's the man responsible for the original Slash Series amplifiers and every amplifier in the JL Audio lineup after that. Prior to JL Audio, he was the chief amp designer at Extant. Before Extant, he was at PPI. You guys may, the old school guys may know, the PPI Art Series amplifiers. Those are Bruce's babies. And, you know, back in the day, Bruce had this crazy idea that he wanted to make an amplifier that did not have a power supply in it. So if you don't know how amplifiers work, you have 12 volts that come in from your battery, right? And then the power supply boosts it and you get 30, 40, 50, 60 volts, whatever the case may be, you know, whatever your power is, you know, voltage, it all comes together. So it increases and then you get your output. So Bruce like, said, I want to do something without a power supply, just 12 volts in, 12 volts out. But we all know Ohm's law and how everything's tied together, right? Voltage resistance, current, all of that comes together. And, you know, some of you guys may remember the old, you know, cheater high current amps back in the day where they would say, oh, it's a 200 watt amp. But if you put 45 woofers on it and drop it to a, uh, you know, one one millionth of a load, it's 5,000 watts. So they were, you know, really lowering the overall resistance to increase current flow and get more power. But Bruce wanted to do something with a single woofer. So he was able to work with our engineering team in Florida and they developed these super um, low impedance TW1 drivers. So at a quarter of an ohm, 12 volts coming in is what goes to the speaker. But that 12 volts, because it's at such a low impedance, it allows more current to flow, it becomes 400 watts. So by not using a power supply on these amplifiers, we are pushing the theoretical threshold of efficiency because we're not boosting anything. We're not dealing with any extra heat loss. We're literally taking your battery's 12, 12 and a half volts and using that to power the subwoofer through a very high current system, which is why if you open one of these up, I think we use 10 or eight gauge speaker wire yeah, it's, it's really crazy because any, any resistance there takes away immediate amount of power because there's yeah. a percentage of the total it's a huge number 
And, you know, I, I love what you shared about Bruce's history. And then when he came on with us and there's some comments in the chat about, you know, pe people always wanting to stick with JL Audio. Now they can, right? They have amps and, and they have subwoofers. And that's really what Bruce was waiting for as well. He had this idea, but he knew that the only way to get real power is to have a spe specially designed subwoofer that could take advantage of the technology. And if you don't have that, it just doesn't work. That The whole concept kind of falls down. So like Rob was just saying, when you have the capability of designing a purpose-built woofer for this application is when you can marry the two and get really great results. Uh, and like Rob was also sharing, the efficiency of this amplifier is high enough that we can put it literally on the end cap of the amplifier and not have to worry about a whole, uh, sorry, of the enclosure and not have to worry about any real heat concerns. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's truly a marrying of all these different technologies in one little package, very little at that point. So yeah. <laughs> And, uh, you know, 400 watts, what I love about these is they're easy to remove in and out of a vehicle if needed with the removable power plug, especially if you're using the high level input harness. Um, you don't have to worry about any, you know, exposed RCA tips or anything. You still have a port for an RBC1 base control knob to adjust, excuse me, to address the levels and just a really well thought out, just awesome package. And I'm really happy we were able to finally put Bruce's vision to work and of course it was done in the jl audio manner one thing i will say though if you are using a power wedge plus or a micro sub plus remember these are quarter ohm drivers and uh two tenth of an ohm drive or four tenth of an ohm drivers on the aw3 ones so you cannot just swap these out with a regular driver well you can <laughs> you'd be very disappointed but you can. <laughs> all of your output because that Big increase in resistance, you know, going from a quarter of an ohm impedance to a four ohm impedance, that's going to choke a lot of that current flow and you're going to get substantially less power now. So just be aware if you were to blow one of these, just reach out to customer service or your dealer and we'll make sure the right driver gets put back in. What is that, like a 12, 18, 24 dB drop when you go from quarter to four? There. Yeah, it's got to be a lot. <laughs> so um, another overlooked lineup for me is the base wedge. Um, this is a great, I want to say it's a great price point system, really. Um, you know, if you don't have a big budget, you're just getting into car audio. I mean, I remember when I was 16, I was very lucky my dad was in the business and I got hooked up. But, you know, if you don't have that type of luxury, you know, it can get expensive when you're, you know, not making a ton of money as we all do when we're, you know, get our first car. So this is a phenomenal for me starting system, these base wedge enclosures. They use our W0V3 lineup. And what I love about them is there's, I always struggle explaining it, but there's just this like extra oomph on the yep. bottom end for me that yep. these enclosures have there's just like there's just a fatness to the base and you know the fact that you have also multiple install options yep you can either you know backfire or downfire these so again if you're in a more open type vehicle like an suv a crossover a hatchback downfiring will probably yield you a better base response and if you have a car with a sealed trunk, you know, have it normal where you have the angle back up against the seat, subwoofer facing the trunk and let it fire off. And then all the base waves, you know, reflect up into the cabin of the vehicle. So again, multiple options to improve the performance depending on the vehicle type. You still have the single or dual options and even the duals you can down fire or, you know, back fire. And there's just, you know, for, for 250 to 400 watts of power, you don't need a super expensive amplifier. They have tons of output. As I said earlier, the technical term, they have fatness in the bottom end that I just can't describe, but I, I am already picturing it in my head again. Um, it's these a are great, low is what it is, Rob. <laughs> these are just, they're great, great, you know, a great starting system. Or just if you're on a budget and you want good base, this is a fantastic line of subwoofers and enclosures to look at. You still have the beautiful JL Audio embroidery. And uh, here's a great example sent in from Rob Jones from um, Moni's House of Tint. And this is what Kevin was talking about earlier. They just built a nice little trim panel and that looks like it's a custom enclosure. So you still get that custom look, but you don't have to spend the extra money if you don't have the budget for it on, a on the enclosure itself. You get something that's purpose-built for the drivers and just make it look pretty with that extra panel in the front. And this is 
you know, what we were talking about earlier. And I love that they did this in this card because that looks great and it's probably done on a budget and you wouldn't know by looking at it. And yeah, I agree, Rob. I, I, hats off to these guys. They did a really good job making a, you know, a, a nice enclosure blend in and look custom. Um, yep. I, I do want to share real quick, Rob, if I may, that yeah, I remember absolutely. when the engineers were developing this line of enclosures, and even though it's at the lower end of our price range um, for, for a prefab enclosure, they spent over a year and a half working with these enclosures to get the most performance that they could. And there's lots of things that they you know, that we focus on in terms of rigidity. And one thing that I think is kind of interesting, and it's sort of inside pool, so I, you know, sorry if it's not like as cool as some of the cool stuff Rob's talking about, but when you want to ship these things, they have to fit in containers, right? They work with the dimensions to maximize all of that, to keep the price as low as possible and keep the performance as high as possible. So little things like that weigh into the decisions very, very heavily. It's not just a matter of, hey, we need a quick ported enclosure to throw a woofer in. They work for a year and a half on this to maximize performance and minimize the space that it would take up so that we could keep it at a very low price point. So there's a lot going on with these things. And you know, when you see something like this right now that the guys there did, they're blending that in and making it look fantastic. Great performance, excellent price point, and they blend it in to make it look absolutely stunning. That's what we did this for. So thank you for showing it. Yeah. No. Always love it when we get these good submissions. So, and again, if it's, if it's, if there's a bullet point, that extra oomph that these, uh, <laughs> these enclosures give, I love it. So technical term. yes, very technical. We're all about using the proper tech terminology when we do these sessions. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, last but not least, the ultimate sleeper line, the micro sub, um, you know, it's kind of funny now that I, I still call it an ultimate sleeper. Like those that are in the know, no, this is the real deal. But if you didn't know about the micro sub and you're just like an eight inch ported enclosure, please, what is this going to do? These are without a doubt the ultimate sleepers then for you. Um, I remember, you know, the story when we first came out with the micro sub, um, no one wanted to buy it. None of our dealers wanted it. They were like, what are we going to do with an eight inch ported enclosure? What's that's not going to put out any output. So we had put together a program for our dealers and said, look, all of you, we're going to make you buy two, one for show and one to sell. And if you don't like it, if you can't sell it, we'll take them back. We'll pay for the freight. It's literally going to cost you nothing to put, bring this CP 108 into your store. Not a single one came back. And to this date, the CP108 is our best selling uh, subwoofer, enclosed subwoofer system to date. Yep. And there's it's just a reason. magic to it. I um, mean, you know, a lot of it, again, is the port design that our engineering team was able to come up with, with this side loaded port. And um, what's unique with, uh, you know, we, we do a lot of side by side engineering. Sometimes they'll do the drivers first and then they'll work on enclosures later. But when the 8W3V3 was being developed, the micro sub enclosure was being developed at the same time. So as they would change parameters to the driver, they would then listen to the driver in the enclosure and then make any adjustments to the enclosure based off of the driver's adjustments and vice versa. So you literally had side-by-side -side engineering of both of these products and that just yields the perfect blend of output <laughs> It's the ultimate parallel development, I guess, too. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Steve Moss kind of likes the CP108. I don't know. In the chat, he seems to be kind of excited about it. Um, th this thing is incredible. And, uh, you know, I know we have a lot of consumers as well as dealers on. Um, if you are designing a custom enclosure, the worst thing in the world is to go through all the effort of building a custom enclosure into a vehicle and firing it up only to have it not sound the way you want. Um, this box can eradicate all of that. If you have an opportunity to put this, it'll fit anywhere. So you put it in the area that you want to put your subwoofer, your custom subwoofer, and you listen to it. And if the performance of this is good, there's a high likelihood that your custom box will also sound good. Or you could take the chance of try it right <laughs> but uh i think anyone that's done it like the guys at elevated or you know, obviously glenn and steve um they've done a lot of this stuff and they know that when you want to do a custom enclosure you want to test it before you go through the trouble of building something in um and this is a perfect box for it for all the reasons that robbers are saying and you know beautifully built i mean this is a small enclosure but still look at that internal bracing the port wall helps brace everything as well just rock solid and you know in terms of output you know, Steve was telling a story in one of our previous sessions. We had an employee that came up to him and said, hey, my son's looking to get some stuff for his car. 
you know, can you help him out? So Steve took him out to his car. He had a CP 108 in it. Kid was like, that sounds awesome. That's what I want. And when this little eight inch enclosure showed up, he's like, I don't want that. That's little. I want what Steve had. It's like, but that's yeah. what Steve had. <laughs> oh no, I thought he had a 12. No, he yeah. had a CP 108 in his car. So um, they absolutely do get down. And we have a couple options as well. We have the CP 208, really nice in single cab trucks. Um, again, dual chamber slot port design on each side of the enclosure. And also, uh, I see this one used a lot in um, Ferraris and some of the, the smaller supercars is the CP106. And this is a micro sub using our uh, 6W3V3 uh, subwoofer. So even that little six, it, it, you know, don't let the size fool you. These things have a lot of output and sound really, really good on minimal amounts of power. Certainly a problem solver. Yeah. And then we also added the 10 inch micro sub series a few years back with the uh, TW1 lineup due to their smaller airspace requirements. And I remember first thinking, I'm like, wait a minute, we're going to call a 12 inch or a 10 inch ported enclosure micro sub. There's something micro oh, about how you look at it, Rob. <laughs> but then I saw the enclosure and I went, holy smokes. When you compare this to any other ported enclosure for a, a normal 10 or 12 inch woofer, it is microscopic. These things are ridiculously small for in compared to what a normal ported enclosure would be. And again, sound great. Don't need a lot of power. And uh, really, it is the mouse that roared. I think that was one of the sayings from the original series back in the 90s. And that's what these ones, the newer generation of micro subs are based on. But you look at them and it doesn't look like much. But once you hear them, man, and jaws are going to drop. These things are the real deal. And again, it's that parallel engineering that we were talking about with the woofer and the enclosure all being worked on at the same time and the appropriate adjustments being made um, to each of them as that type of development goes on. But we didn't stop there. We also came out with the Micro Sub Plus line. So as we talked about earlier with the, the Power Wedge Plus, um, these use that same cool DCD direct conversion class D amplifier that Bruce McMillan developed. We have it available in what's called an ACP for amplified. Uh, so we have the ACP 208 with 28W3V3s. We've got it also for the TW1 and the 8W3V3 versions of the micro sub. So anywhere from 250 to 500 watts, depending on the system. Um, the W3 versions use special four tenth of an ohm 8W3V3 drivers. And uh, what's kind of cool, a little side note, if you guys didn't know this, we have uh, one, two, three, six different models that use, um, you know, our ampli you know, built-in amplification, and they all actually use the same amplifier. It's only one amp in those six different SKUs. The final impedance, whether it's, you know, four tenths of an ohm for an 8W3V3 or two tenths of an ohm for two 8W3V3s or the quarter ohm on the TW1s, that determines if you have the 250, 400, or 500 watts of power um, that's available. So it's actually the woofer's impedance that determines how much this amp's actually putting out. But it's the same amp across the board. It's all about that final woofer impedance. And um, I just think that's really cool. So again, the micro sub is a phenomenal line and we made it a little easier for install um, you know, with the built-in power. And I think that's great. I find these types of amplified systems are great for um, you know, our, our older, Kind of listeners you know as we get older we don't want you know i mean i'm this way now as i'm you know creeping up closer to steve and kevin's age um you know i don't want big boxes in my trunk not a big head out. start on your own <laughs> and you know big giant amps you know as we get older we have families we had to put groceries and stuff in the car we don't need a million watts of power so i think for those types of users these are great because they have a rock solid enclosure and sub built-in power it's easy to undo and remove without having to worry about taping up power wires and all of that stuff so just you know again a, a very well thought out application specific uh enclosure design for those so and we just just to reiterate here um oh, tyler came in and asked if uh that low impedance is that low impedance specific to the amplified micros? And yes, that is that they are specific drivers that go into those uh, specific enclosures. Um, and no, you can't get that 
I was just going to add that, yes. <laughs> um, even though I see a bunch of people asking for them inside yeah. uh, inside the chats there and stuff. No, they're, uh, they are specific to them. Yeah. I mean, they're only available for warranty purposes. You have to have a proof of purchase and all of that. And there's so many risks you potentially run damaging your, you know, standalone amplifier if you were to try to use those in a different system. Or there's the risk of mixing up a normal and a regular and then you're just going to, you know, it's just going to hit the fan from there. So we definitely don't want that. Exactly. We, co we covered a lot today. Um, I hope at the end of the day, you know, that whole, you know, misconception that prefab is not quality. I hope that got thrown out the window. You know, we take a lot of pride in our prefab enclosed subwoofer systems from the engineering, from the production to the numerous different applications. I mean, guys, Steve said, We've spent so much time on the, the the base wedge model to make sure we could fit as many of them in a uh, container as possible to minimize shipping costs. And this is the type of stuff that we look at when we design our stuff. It's second to none, no matter what the price point, no matter what the woofer in it may be or what the application may be. Um, and they're designed by the same guys designing the subwoofer. So you're gonna get an enclosure that's gonna give you the optimal performance across the spectrum, output, quality, and reliability. And um, you I know, think that point right there is the, the one I would like to leave on as well, that you know, th these are not just some spec sheet thing or say, well, you know, here, cut the wood and build a box. These are actually carefully engineered to give the performance. And with very rare exception or within a certain amount of tolerance, they're all about the same as the recommended volumes that we put in the spec sheet for the drivers. And that should tell you something. The recommendation is what we really recommend. <laughs> it's not some illusion. And we put you know our effort behind it with the enclosures that we design and the ones that we build as well. So I did notice, Rob, in the chat that a lot of people are asking for from very vehicle-specific enclosures. Um, the name of our session is Enclosed Subwoofer Systems, but we do a separate session on our stealth boxes, which would cover some of the things that I saw in the chat, things like uh, off-road vehicle applications I saw. And yes, we do have some of those, some for very specific, like someone I think asked for a Ford F-150 box. And we have those as well. These wooden enclosures are designed to be a little bit more cost effective and hit a broader spectrum of applications, uh, kind of a yin to the yang. Same type of performance, but just a little bit more broad uh, approach and a little bit more affordable for most people. Of course, the pro edges with W7s, I wouldn't exactly call cheap. You know? um, but if you're looking for uh, a good example of what a W7 can sound like, you can rest assured that those will deliver what we intend from a W7. Absolutely. And we did a stealth box up, set, uh, stealth box session months ago. So maybe we'll, we'll blow the dust off of that and do that again in the near future. Cause that's a whole nother story and how we build those in our fiberglass department, the R and D research, the 3d scanning and modeling of vehicles. It's a lot that goes into building a stealth box. So maybe we'll, we'll do that one again for you guys uh, in the near future, but real sure. quick before I close out, what? No, I was just going to say for the video that we'll post, we could put a link to it as well. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, if you guys do need more support, um, I know we'll do our best to answer what's coming through the chat and, you know, after this and all of that. But please reach out to our tech support team. Carlos, Eric and Lee are extremely talented. They know their stuff, um, whether you're, you know, need actual troubleshooting, whether you're looking for advice on what are good components to build a system, whether it's enclosure design. Uh, they do it all and they're very talented. So you can reach out to them by clicking on the help icon at the bottom of every page on the JL Audio website. That'll take you to our web form. You can email them at technical at jlaudio.com or you can call our main number and follow the prompts to tech technical support if you want to hear their sweet, sultry voices. Um, our contact information, this isn't necessarily for tech support, but you know we're always asking for feedback. What do you guys want to see? Uh, but then we never really gave you an option to contact us. So training mm -hmm. at jlaudio.com. If you have any ideas for trainings, any things you want us to talk about or you'd like to see, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. That email goes to Kevin, Steve, and myself. And um, with that said, I'm going to close out my keynote and uh, we'll hit up any questions that uh, still remain. Awesome job, Rob. Thank you for covering that. It's a big category and it's an important one to, to us as a company. Um, always has been and always will be. Um, it's a, something we feel really, really strongly about making quality enclosures for our, our subwoofers. 
Um, I, I remember when we were developing the um, the W7 enclosures, the sealed ones especially, um, the reason behind it was that, you know, here's a W7, it's really, really expensive, and it goes back a number of years, of course. Um, it's really, really expensive, and people will be skeptical about the level of performance, and if they're going to go through the effort of building a custom enclosure for this odd size, odd configuration driver that's really freaking heavy, it's going to be a lot of effort, and if they're not happy with it, that would be very disappointing. So we wanted to give people an opportunity to hear what they can do in an enclosure designed by us to show off the capabilities. And I think, you know, again, if, if you get a lot of what we, we share with you, think about that, that our engineers that make our subwoofers want to make sure that you as our consumer can hear what they can really do. So if you want to take the guessing game out, prefab is the way to go because, you know, we are designing them to get you the performance that the drivers are capable of. And I think, you know, when you when you look at that, uh, the CP108 that everyone seems to love, and I love it too, that's why I had it in the car. <laughs> um, I think the expectation from an 8 is what makes that thing such a rock star. You never expect that from an eight. Well, bear in mind the same people that design that are designing the other ones as well, and they're aiming for a similar type of performance to blow you away. Now, granted, if you go from spending that amount of money to something you know eight times more expensive than that, expectations will shift. Of course, um, our goal is to hit those expectations every time. So, a little side note. Yeah, and, and as an installer and and a and a enclosure builder, it's one of the things I do really enjoy doing is building enclosures. Um, I. I will say this, you really, and just to preface what Steve and Rob have both said during this uh, this training is, you would be extremely hard pressed to build a custom enclosure that would deliver the performance and the reliability for the money uh, that you're going to, to spend to build an enclosure to meet what these things are doing. Like you said, they're not prefab enclosures. Um, I know somebody said they're preloaded enclosures, yeah. um, not prefab enclosures in the chat there, which is a great, uh, a, a great way to We're looking at it. Yep. But you would be really, really hard pressed to build something, not just looks or perform or reliability, but performance big time on these things. They are all designed for the application. They're all designed specifically for the subwoofers. They're uh, inserted in them. They're not universal by any means. And, and they do put it down and, and give you what you're going to expect. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt at all. So, Kevin, I know that you were minding the chat much more carefully than I was this time. So, <laughs> did you see anything that we need to, you know, kind of follow up on? Did we miss I anything? Do. I got a couple I'm going to uh, to show here. Um, Tyler um, asked if um, you have any uh, explanation to ex or any way to explain the different qualities of up firing, down, front, rear firing, facing your uh, your enclosure and and what the best way to do it is. Um, there's pros and cons to all of them. Um, my always suggestion is, is move your enclosure around in your vehicle and pick what's going to fit your performance needs and what's going to least have the ability of damage needs too, right? So <laughs> and look at this thing too, because it may sound really good and may be protecting the driver from damage, but it just may look hideous. All of those things, you know. <laughs> That's true. So there okay. are benefits and pros and it depends on the vehicle that they're in. Some vehicles are going to perform differently than others. Um hatchbacks, it's always good to have them kind of facing towards the rear, right? Because you get that kind of load off of there. Um, but then if you're throwing stuff in the trunk, you're going to go play softball or whatever, and you throw a, a bat in the back and you end up catching a handle on something or cleats or, you know, you never know. So there's always pros and cons. And like Steve said, it's got to look good too. Gotta, you know, that is part of it. As a techie kind of guy, I tend to focus on the performance period, just you right. know, make perform whatever it takes. But if it looks really horrible, it may sound great, but someone's going to be complaining about it. So you do have to weigh that in at some point. Um, and again, it goes back to why I love the CP108. You try it. You try it in a location. See, so, you know, if, if I had the baffle from my woofer over here, I'll put my CP108 in that area. And if it sounds good there, then I could build it that way. Or you move it around, like Evan's been saying, you move it around and you find a place that sounds really, really good. It's like, yeah, but it's in the middle of everything. I can't do anything with that. Well, let's see what we got to do to move it to a place where it does look good and still gives you the performance that you're looking for. Um, I think maybe what he might have wanted um, was a little bit more of why loading ma matters. 
Um, yeah. That's kind of technical, and there's some things that we can do to you know kind of dig into that. But basically, it has to do with the the air that's in front of the driver acts as if it's a, a mass or kind of additional weight on the cone itself, and it lowers or changes some of the parameters of the driver and tends to load at a lower frequency. But that's not always a good thing. Um, we have some other ideas for trainings that will talk a little bit about um, how different enclosures and different design ideas can can help uh, system design in terms of what's going to work for your vehicle. Uh, mass loading or down firing or things of that nature can shift the way an enclosure sounds. But it goes back to what Kevin was just talking about, making sure that it, it's going to match the installation properly, sound good, be reliable, all those things. So the the Good system design, like we've done a training on system design, good system design doesn't happen by accident. Good enclosure design doesn't happen by accident. Good enclosure installation also doesn't happen by accident. You have to weigh all of these considerations. You know, it's one of those things that, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the chat because I'm waiting for, for Steve and Glenn and anyone from Elevated or any of the other guys that are always chiming in about their successes. They know this instinctively. They know that when you hit on something magical, it's not magic. They've done a lot of this and they've tested a lot of it. Um, which is why we rely heavily on our dealer network to give that that, that kind of uh, experience to our consumers. Well, we want you to get the best sound every single time. And sometimes it takes a little bit of back and forth and testing to make sure it's going to happen that way. So work together. Let's find a way to make everything you know really come together. Um, our retailers have access to training like this and uh, access to the, the resources to, to give you the best performance. And that's that's what we want, really. That's what we want. So. Here's a, another good uh, question from a guy with a great name, Kevin. Um, he says, <laughs> uh, can you connect a VX 400 slash 4i to a micro sub for a three-way system? And absolutely. Um, yes. that's, a, that's a great little layout. Actually, it's the same layout I have in my office. Yeah, perfect. Uh, <laughs> I've got a 6W3 and a set of three, uh, C3s um, off of a VX 400 4i. Uh, bridged off of them that way so absolutely you can do that and it will work out great and it'll give you some uh some dsp that you can go in and really uh dial things in and, and fine tune it for you it does leave the door open for a little bit of an upgrade down the road too so. it, it does <laughs> you add, a, add a dedicated sub amp free up those yep. channels to go active on the front well, stage yep. exactly yep. they'll keep the dsp pre out if it was a non-vxi subwoofer amplifier so you still tune that sub that'd be an awesome nice. system Love it all day long. So yes, they emphatic yes. <laughs> um, oh, let's see here. Well, we got a lot of uh, softballs being thrown up here <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that will leave uh, leave. <laughs> Um, a lot of people giving us praise and great training, uh, Rob, and uh, and a lot of uh, good things. They don't see wrong, though. They keep saying Rob. It's <laughs> uh, when will there be a W seven training? That's uh, one of the softballs. I, I Ooh, it's <laughs> on, guys. Uh... It's time to go, right? <laughs> All right. So, so the, the deal with the W7 training, uh, we're joking around. We've been actually cobbling something together for the past couple of months, believe it or not. Um, w 7s have been around for a while, so we don't feel a sense of urgency. You kind of know a little bit about them already. Um, but it's a very special presentation. When we launched the W7, we sent a, a team of, of trainers, um, six or eight of them, we sent out into the field to get everybody trained before we'd actually ship them the product. And there was a training manual that came with it, you know, uh, when we did the sessions that we would hand out that had lots of really incredible detailed information about the product because at the time it was groundbreaking. It was, was that right? That I'm looking for mine, but I can't find it. Yeah, I don't think I have mine readily available right now. But um, so we built the training around this this document, and we went to market with it, and there was lots of really good stuff in it, and it's still relevant today. Uh, the the trouble is some of the files that we used are little. <laughs> We've had some trouble recovering some of those, and we just we're literally putting the final touches on that. I don't have a date. Oh, there you go. There you um, go. If you've ever read this document, by the way, I know it's been posted on the JL for Life group, but I mean, I mean, all of this right here is just on like voice coil design. Imagine yeah. putting all of that into a training presentation. It's not easy. <laughs> so, so here's a question. This is the the thousand dollar. I'm not paying uh, trivia question for people. Rob, if you could hold that booklet up again. Yeah. On the cover. 
there's someone holding that W7. You know, massive credit to anyone who knows whose hands those were. They're not mine. They're not? They're not mine. Somebody with mustard. (laughs) Come on, I'm too weak to hold a W7 up that long. (laughs) That's a hint, by the way. They had to hold it for a while. Yeah, that (laughs) that was lots of pictures taken there. So, So who's Um, hands? Uh, that's the trivia question. I want to see if anyone in the chat picks it up. Mm. See if anyone knows. Um, My guess will be there's nothing in it for you or anything like that. Just you know, mad respect for anyone that remembers. Um, and so that uh, that training is special. We are working on it. Um, we've gone through the Sobo for line, as you know, um, from some of the other trainings that we've done. Um, and that that is one that we do plan on doing. And we'll you know we'll give a couple of week notice to 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 the date on that once we have that that finalized. We do have some other trainings coming up. Um, are we at a point that we know what's happening when? Uh, next week we'll be, uh, hold on, blowing the dust off of another classic, The <laughs> Myth of the Magic Box will be next sure. week's session. That's a fun one. Um, that yeah. just, I'll put it out there right now. That's a long one. Um, we fully anticipate to take a full hour, probably hour and 15 to cover that. Yeah. See all the different charts and explanations between ported and sealed and band pass and the pros and cons of each and trade-offs and gains. It's a pretty cool, it'll be cool. Yeah, it's fun. We've got a lot to, a lot to share on that one. So we do have some plan to, to kind of, we've been bouncing around between product specific training and then technical trainings. And we're going to try to continue that trend. I've uh, got a couple of things that we do have to get done, but that W7 training is forthcoming. I promise we will get that out. So. It really, I know I, not to toot our own horn. I think we do a pretty darn good job of what we do, but the W7, the That's technologies, special. The explanation of the design, I mean, it, it is a whole nother level and it deserves to have the utmost, just best possible presentation possible because it is in a league of its own and the technologies developed for it have trickled down to everything we have now. And yep. uh, it's a lot to dive deep into. So no one got my my trivia question. <laughs> no one got it. So Josh guessed Lucho. That would have been a good guess, but you know, Lucho wouldn't. He would. He would make one of us hold it for sure. Uh, <laughs> and it's not Photoshop, Steve. <laughs> Car sounds over in the Netherlands said those are a girl's hands. I think Hector Yanez would be very upset to hear that. That's who told the speaker. Uh, a guy named Hector used to work for us uh, some years ago, and uh, he was a, a phenomenal installer. He took for the day. You know, to the nines. He was incredible. Um, he worked uh, not only with like R&D building our show cars and things like that. He was one of our trainers when we launched the W7. Uh, he's definitely a, a key member of the JL Audio history. Um, someone in the chat mentioned uh, the JL Audio history video. Hector is in that video several times. Um, he's shown at the back of, of his uh, demo vehicle, his show vehicle that he built. Uh, he's the one that looks like, um, what's his name from uh, Chips? Uh <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think he's even wearing a, a silver jacket showing how 1990s it really was. But yeah, he was holding that thing up and we snapped a picture of him and we used that for the cover. So uh, not a guy, not, not a woman for sure. Now, Hector, Hector had some guns on him and he could hold that thing. So <laughs> yeah, those things are no joke. Yeah, no joke at all. We got one last question here. Um, and uh, what would be a good amp to get the most out of a dual base wedge? Um, there's many amplifiers that you could use something in that 500 watt right uh, range up. I see somebody just uh, commented for the JD 501 there, um, but you yep. have, you have quite a, a few there. You have the RD 501 yeah. and, and some others that kind of float in that range too. Um, so many different options to be able to get with that. The, that the RD would be my, my, ch- my, my suggestion there that are uh, sorry, uh, JD uh, JD five hundred one. That's that's the one I would go with. It's a really good match. So cool, good stuff, guys. Excellent yep. session, I think. Um, Rob, you did pretty good on the time, even with uh, the somewhat frequent interruptions. Well, uh, I factor interruptions in now when I build these presentations out. Yeah, you know better now. So. <laughs> 
So, uh, and Rob finally shared a contact information. Shame on us for yeah. not sharing that sooner. Um, so we'll we'll reiterate what Rob said earlier. Uh, we're always looking for feedback. Obviously, W7 training is high on the list. You guys are asking for it, and we are well into it. Actually, I have the, the session open over here on my computer right now. Um, so we're, we are working on that. The Myth of the Magic Box is next week. Um, and again, I'll put out there that you know Thursday, 4 o'clock Miami time is what we've been using. Uh, it seems to work well. Uh, most of you guys seem to be able to, to join us at those times. Um, but if you prefer a different day or maybe a different time, let us know. We'll do. Um, we'll we'll see if we can accommodate. Um, unless something else has come in while I was babbling there, I, I, I'm going to say um, good night and thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Um, so, yeah. Thanks everybody. Thanks, everyone.